There's some basic boat operating principles. One of them is fairing. So with the current coming down river, we always want to try and keep the nose of our boats facing up river when we're trying to perform victim pickups or navigate through obstructions um, or work our way into eddies. <clears throat> Whatever that application is, as long as our we're motoring up river, we have maximal steering control and operational control of the boat. As soon as we're facing down river, we lose a lot of those performance characteristics and responsiveness from the motor and from the boat. So remember to always get your nose up river when performing those applications. When we talk about fairing, we're talking about adjusting the nose of our boat 15 to 30 degrees, facing up river, allowing that current to push towards the side of the boat as we're orienting and uh, allowing our boat to kind of navigate left to right while either hovering or holding position or working our way up river. So remember the stronger the current, the more reactive the boat. As soon as your nose comes off directly up river, if it's heading towards the left side, your boat's immediately going to start traveling towards the left side. If it's heading towards the right side, the boat's going to naturally start traveling towards the right side. The stronger the ferry, the stronger the reaction. A lot of times we have to counteract that reaction, particularly when we're picking up victims. So if we collect a victim on one side of the boat, for example, the right side of the boat in this application, I would have to ensure that my, that my rudder control counterbalances that to prevent us from altering our ferry angle and moving towards bank. So if I want to intentionally hold position, as soon as we take that victim on the right side of the boat, it's naturally gonna pull the nose of the boat over towards the right side. To counteract that, I have to do an opposite action on my motor, throttle up uh, without losing the victim and control that position. So understand the current, understand the current conditions, and understand those ferrying operations. All right, so here we're in some decent current. I'm at about quarter throttle, controlling the boat in this current. If my nose starts to drift right, the boat's gonna drift right. Nose starts to drift left, the boat's gonna drift left. When you're the pilot, you wanna make sure that you don't get distracted by personnel in the boat or things going on around you. You gotta make sure that you're aware of your craft and you're aware of the river. So try and pick benchmarks when you're positioning yourself on water, one to keep you up river, as well as one on the shore to spot your position in the water, make sure you're not being pushed down river or up river. Okay, when we go through each boat, we're gonna talk about the different craft characteristics and how they handle on the river. So one of the unique things about tunnel hole craft, like the Tinga boat that we're in now, they are very reactive. They don't shift across the water at all. They basically operate on rails, which are the hijackers that run underneath the sponsons. And when you want to turn or ferry, they are incredibly reactive right now. The great thing about doing downriver eddy turns in crafts like this um, is you're not going to have any washout. And basically, the front nose of the boat picks up out of the water and just repositions itself. When we perform those same maneuvers with John boats or standard V-bottoms or inflatable craft, normal inflatable craft, you're going to find it that you have to get yourself a little bit further away from the objective when you go to drop in because the turns just aren't as tight and aren't as reactive. So there's some generic principles about operating crafts, but you really need to spend time in your boat to learn your boat, to know your boat, and to understand its turn radiuses, as well as how you operate it.